Welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to do the analysis for your uh, free fall experiment. Watch in HD. The first thing to do is recreate your data table from your, uh, your raw data here in Excel. So the first thing that you have is vertical displacement. After you write what the quantity is, put a comma and then put the variable. The variable for vertical displacement is delta y. You get a delta by hitting insert, then going to the far right, hit the symbol button. Did you see the symbol button? Here it is. Hit that, and then you choose the delta sign. So if you're in normal text at the very top, normal text is what you want, uh, the delta sign, if you start out at the very top of the chart, the symbol chart, you click down here on the bar, not on the arrow, but here in the middle of the bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Delta is on the left side, right in the middle. So you insert, you double click one way or the other, then you hit close. And now I have a delta. So delta Y, the third thing that goes into the column heading is the unit. Then the next thing I wrote down was time of release, comma, T initial, unit of seconds. Then time of impact, comma, T final, units of seconds. My text is all running into it. You know, this text runs into that text. The columns aren't wide enough. One way to adjust the width is to uh, hover over the line between B and C. So you see this icon with two arrows, one pointing left, one right. And then you click and you move this thing over by dragging the mouse over to it manually adjust the width of columns. But an even better way, instead of manually adjusting, just double click that line between B and C and you automatically adjust the column width to fit the text. Better yet, if you click on the B itself, not down here, but click on the B itself to select the entire column, click and then drag over to D and double click either this line between B and C or this one between C and D and they all adjust. That's really cool. Then I need to make my I subscript. So it's T sub I subscript. So you highlight just the I and then you go back to home in the tabs and you click this font button. So next to the word font there's this little button with a like a window symbol. You click it and this pop-up appears. You want to choose the option that says subscript click that box, then hit OK. And do the same thing for final, highlight just the F, hit the font window button, choose subscript, hit OK. Now you plug in your values. I'm going to do that by pausing the video. So here are my values. Uh, I made this data up. It's going to come out to a really, really good... My results were going to be great because I made up my data so that I had good results. Okay. The next thing I need to do is I need to calculate the time of descent, which is delta t. So I go to insert. Oh no, I don't want to go through the rigmarole. You just click on this from the toolbar. It's important to do this from the toolbar. Uh, in the, or rather, in the formula bar, I mean. In the formula bar, you click there, and then you highlight the delta. Hit Control C to copy it. Control C to copy. Then you go back over to the time of descent. You go into the toolbar. You hit Control V to paste the delta, and then finish up the column heading. Delta T is the variable. Seconds is the unit. If you don't go into the control bar and you hit Control V, v is in Victor to paste, then you replace all of the text that was there with the pasted text. But we don't want to do that. We want to preserve what we already had. So you go into the toolbar. OK, double click between E and F, that line, to auto adjust the width. And I'm going to center everything here. Center, center, because I like how it looks centered. To calculate the time of descent, you need to take the final value, the final time, minus the initial time. The way you tell Excel to do a calculation, and you want to use Excel for the calculations, first you hit equals, and that says, hey, Excel. I'm about to put in a calculation. 
And you might be thinking, okay, so you do equals, then type in the 1.8, the final, minus 1.6, the initial, and hit enter. Well, while that does work, there's a much more powerful, quicker way, which allows you to do it automatically. right? Because if you do it this way, then you have to then go to the next line, hit equals, say, okay, 3.1 minus 2.87. That's a lot of manual input. And here's how you can cut it all out. Don't do it at all. You put equals, and rather than typing out 1.8, you simply refer to the cell which contains 1.8. D3 is called a reference, and I'm I'm clicking on the the cell itself rather than typing out 1.8. Then you do minus, and you reference the cell with 1.6, and you hit enter. And then the really cool part, see that little green box here in the corner of the big box? There's the big green box, the outline, and then there's the solid green box right here. Click that solid green box so that you get this icon, the cross icon there, and drag down to the bottom, and look at what happens. If I look at this inspect the cell, it's now taking this value minus this value, and it's now in the, the next one below taking this value minus this value. In other words, when you copy a formula, control C and then control V, or you can just drag down, both methods work. When you copy a formula down, the references move as well. So it's always taking 1 to the left minus 2 to the left. 1 to the left minus 2 to the left from here. So from here, it's 1 to the left minus 2 to the left. So the references move when you copy a formula. The references move as well. OK, the last thing we need is time squared. And that has the variable delta. Oops, let me get my delta. I go into the bar, the formula bar, control, co uh, control C to copy, and then I go into this bar, control V to paste, delta T squared. When you square the time, the seconds, the unit gets squared as well. So double click. Now I highlight the two, click the font button, choose superscript. Highlight this two as well, right down here, this two. Hit the font button, choose superscript. Good. The way you calculate time squared, you hit equals, hey Excel, here's my equation. You reference the cell with the time, 0.2 seconds, here it is. And then you do the caret, shift 6, 2, which indicates raised to the power of 2, square it. And again, you drag this down, and now all of these values are getting squared over here in this column. I'm going to center all of this. Oops, got to click it twice. And <clears throat> we're almost there, almost ready to add the graph. The last thing, oh, I need to see this still. The last thing you have to do, notice how all of these values are rounded to different places. We're going to learn about rounding when we study something called uncertainty. But for right now, what I want you to do is find the value with the most decimal places. Hmm, it's these, right? These are the ones. How many decimal places do they have? Two. So give all of these values two decimal places. OK, easy enough. So you're probably thinking, go here, add a 0, hit Enter. Oh, Excel takes away the 0. Here's how you get that 0 to stay. In the, in the Home tab, there's a portion called Number on the ribbon. And you want to choose, so right here is a button which, when clicked, adds decimal places to the values. So I click it, and now they all have one decimal place. If I click again, oops, too many. So then you take it away with the other button. So here, let's see, I need these to all have two decimal places. So I add. Here, I want them to have two. So I add again. Whoops, too many. Here, let's give these all two decimal places. And let's give these all three decimal places. Why not? Seems reasonable. Now we are ready to add our table. So, oops. The way to add a table, you click the Insert tab on the ribbon. <clears throat> then you go over to the Charts portion, Charts, and you see there's this Dots chart. That's called a scatter chart. So you click that button, and you choose the first option, 
with no lines, nothing but the dots themselves. Click it, and here's my chart. Whoa, it has this whole, all this mess. What is all that stuff? We're gonna get rid of it. All these points. Uh, if your chart is blank, you follow the same instructions I show you next. Right click on the chart, go to select data, and it brings this up. All of this stuff was automatically inputted by Excel, and we don't want it. We want to tell Excel exactly what goes into the chart. Don't worry about this on the right, it takes care of itself. So I'm gonna click, hit remove, click, hit remove, click, hit remove, click and hit remove. And now it's all blank. We're gonna add a new series. A series is what Excel calls a data set. It's just a set of XY pairs. So you hit add, click. Don't worry about a series name. Click on where it has X values, and now you're gonna tell Excel what X values to put on the graph by clicking and dragging from your table. So time squared is, should, should be on the x-axis, so you click and you drag down. For the y values, you wanna highlight the one equals one, hit backspace, and then click and drag what we want on the y-axis, displacement. Hit OK, and hit OK. Beautiful. You might have series one down here. Go ahead and uh, click it. It might be showing up on the right, Either way, click it, and then hit backspace to delete. You add a trend line by right-clicking a data point, not the chart, but click a data, right-click a data point, then choose Add Trend Line. And then the Format Trend Line box pops up. If the Format Trend Line box doesn't pop up, then you can right-click on your trend line itself. And I know I've clicked the trend line because there's a little select dot here and a selected dot here. So I right click and then I do format trend line at the bottom. We A trend line is just Excel's name for the line of best fit. It's the line that clo uh, passes most closely to all of your data points. It should be a linear line. We want a straight line of best fit. And then you scroll to the bottom and the second to last thing is a little box where it says display equation on chart check that box and now you have this equation which has the form y equals mx plus b so what's the slope of the equation here it's 4.809 that's my slope and it's pretty close to the 4.9 which I expected the last step is to add chart uh, add titles so you need an x-axis and a y -axis, a y-axis and x-axis title and you need a main chart title the way you do that in the new Excel is you hit this button this plus and you click axis titles and chart titles. Check both boxes. On my y-axis, I have delta y. So I'm gonna be really clever. I'm gonna come up here into my toolbar, my formula bar. I'm gonna highlight delta y, control C, then come back down. Click once on axis title to select the box. Give a second click, a delayed click, to enter the box and then you double click twice or three times, uh oh, one, two, three, to choose to select all of the text. And then you control V to paste what you just copied, delta Y. And in addition to the variable, put the units. Every axis title must have units to, uh, on a formal, you know, when we're doing a formal graph. Down here, I want time squared, so I'm just gonna copy that, whoops, let me show you. So I'm coming up, I'm copying times squared, delta t squared, in seconds squared. I click here once, a second time, one, two, three, whoops, one, two, three. Oh gosh, one, two, three, <laughs> come on, <laughs> there we go, kind of a game. Then control V to paste, uh-oh, it didn't copy my, subs my superscripts. So a trick in Excel, when you're on a graph, you can do control shift plus to superscript, and then likewise here, Control-Shift-Plus to make that superscript. The final thing is a chart title. So you don't have to be too creative. I'm just going to say, what did I drop? My stress ball. So stress ball in free fall. That's nifty. And this is all you need from Excel. The next step is to calculate a couple of things for data analysis, like your error and percent error. 
and the experimental acceleration due to gravity. That's in the next video.